Let's take you to Lagos now, where the Lagos State Judicial Panel of Inquiry on restitution of victims of SARS and other police human rights violations still has pending cases, despite a three-month extension of its initial timeline. So far, the process has administered justice to some petitioners, with others still trying to pro prove police actions were unfair to them. Jennifer Igwe has an update. To address the many cases of alleged police brutality, the Lagos State Judicial Panel on Restitution for Victims of SARS, Related Abuses and Other Matters was created. 200 petitions were submitted. So far, one by one, 113 have been heard. To unload big dead bodies in a lot of Proven cases was and is still pertinent. So although some petitioners had touchy stories under cross-examinations by legal counsels, they were left hanging. Some petitioners backed down and withdrew their cases because series of events had overtaken their martyrs, while a few others were struck out by the panel because of unseriousness and lack of due process. Those who have successfully proved their cases have received financial compensations and apologies. As a case of, um, I think, like two, three persons received 10 million involving cases of uh, death. There was one 7.5 million, there was another 5 million, then a million. 750,000, 500,000. The panel has also been very open, transparent. Actually, there are people who have justifiable matters. Uh, and there are people who also feel that this matter, oh, they are just coming here just because the panel is set up and they just felt that, oh, let me try our law. The judicial panel is still ongoing. On this day, for instance, eight cases were heard. One was struck out. One adjourned Senedai, and six others were scheduled for adoption of final written addresses for 16th and 13th of July 2021. The panel started its seating, and it was to end May 2021, but had three months extension. Now, 19th of July is the expected end of the three months extension. Will there be another? Now that's something we'll have to find out. In Lagos, Jennifer Igwe, NTA News. Thank you, Jennifer. Now, the Federal High Court sitting in Abuja has ruled that former Minister of Finance, Kemi Adioshun, was ineligible for national service as at the time of her graduation. The court presided over by Justice Taiwo Taiwo ruled that the ministerial appointment of Kemi Adeoshin was not illegal, neither was it unconstitutional, even without presenting the NYC certificate. The court maintained that Adeoshin was not supposed to present herself for national youth service because under the 1979 constitution, which was in force at the time of her graduation, she was not a Nigerian citizen, either at the time of her graduation or when she turned 30. The Federal High Court asserted that the constitution did not require her to present her first degree certificate or any other certificate, including the NYSC certificate, to be appointed a minister. The court said since the 1979 constitution, which was in force at the time, did not recognize dual citizenship. Adeo Shun could not have served because she was a British citizen. Adeo Shun graduated from the University of East London in 1989 at the age of 22. The court ruled that Nigeria's citizenship only reverted on the extant constitution, by which time Adeo Shun was well above 30. And by the court ruling, ineligible to participate in NYSC scheme as the scheme is exclusively reserved for Nigeria.